TFT gamers, this is Zozo. I'm a challenger on North America server, and Jin is one of my favorite carries. Today, I'm going to teach you how to play snipers so you can further improve your gameplays. There are tons of sniper guides out here on YouTube, but today, me, I play this comp a little different than everyone else. I want to share my strategy with y'all and make this comp even better. Our agenda today, we're going to talk about the strengths and the weaknesses of this comp, how to build this comp, what is the, what is the good itemizations, good augments, some of the general high-level economy strategies, and lastly, I'll give you some general tips and also some specific matchup tips. The strengths and weaknesses comp is very simple. This It's a very high-value uh, board with lots of crowd control. Basically, these, these, these components will give you a consistent top four. Your LP will go up. With great augments and great positionings, you actually have a good chance to beat any boards in this game with the sniper board. Some of the weakness, weaknesses of this board is also very obvious. Jin misses his shots. You know, sometimes your Oriana will cast and your Jin will just happen to miss the shot after the Oriana shockwave. Kaisa would dash away from Jin's shot. Or if your opponent's building dodge hands, itemizations, or even augments like so small, your Jin will miss his shots. And that feels bad. Assassins also counter snipers, but I will teach you how to position against uh, assassins so you can actually increase your odds to beat assassins. This comp also have a lower win percentage against uh, some of the two-star five-class carries, such as, you know, Socialite Kai'Sa, uh, Socialite Victor. But, you know, there are two-star five cards, and they're supposed to be better than a two-star four cost carry, right? So, I'm okay with that. Now, let me show you what a standard level A board should look like for this comp. So, here's what it is. You're running Brom, Sion, Blitz, along with Misfortune, Jin, Janna, and Oriana. Every single unit in this comp has a purpose. And you can add in Yumi or Jace for level 9. As you can see from this uh, plot, uh, Braum and Sion offers combined 6 seconds of CC. Uh, Blitzcrank gives you another CC that forces your opponent not to put units in the corner. And also a team shield with Janna along with both making the uh, scrap. Your main DPS, your Jin. Misfortune gives healing reductions. And Oriana offers additional CC and shield for your entire team. And if you happen to have like Sniper Emblem or Sniper Plus One, you can replace MF for a Scholar, such as Yumi, uh, Lissandra, or Zyra. Or you can put in uh, Jace or Taric, depends on your matchups. And keep in mind, Sniper Emblem is actually really good on Oriana. So when you get a Sniper Emblem, don't forget to put it on. You know, this board is so strong. Why? Because this board has super strong front lines and super, super strong, even stronger crowd controls. And these two things are the key to the success of this comp. Why? Because, you know, Sniper has plus one range. And the further the enemies, the higher the DPS output from your Sniper. So we are going to prioritize building our tank items, tank itemizations for our strong front lines. Now let's talk about itemizations. You can probably notice background changes to my favorite unit in this game, Sion. So now we're going to talk about the tank itemizations for Sion or Braum. Keep in mind, Sion always has a prior, higher priority than Braum. I do believe there is a best in slot items for Sion, which is going to be Bramble West, 2 Chains, Warmock, 2 Bell, and Dragon Clock, 2 Cloak. Some other options that also works could be Gargoyle Stone Plays, Titans Resolve, Zero Art Portals, Frozen Hearth, Sunfire, Shroud, Morello, Redemption. All these tank items also works on Sion. But what's the most important thing is that you wanted to prioritize and itemize your Sion for this comp. Why? You know, for 12 gold, you will get a Matt Titan who is smart enough to CC the majority of enemies for 3 seconds. But if you get Braum 2 first, put your tank items on Braum 2, you know? But you can also consider remake the Braum later, just like, you know, sell Braum, make a new Braum, and put his item on Sion if you have Sion 2. But basically the priority is that Sion 2 always over Braum 2, over Sion 1, and over Braum 1. 
Now, I think this probably gives you an idea like what type of strategy I'm going for. I'm going to go for like a very safe and flexible strategy. I'm going to prioritize building my frontline items. So, which means I'm going to start my first carousel. I'm going to start with chain. And I will prioritize building a Bremble Vest. Why? You know, you guys probably already know 12.1 assassins are rising. So, Bremble Vest is great against assassins. Tank, tank items are super strong in the early game. They can, they can save your HP. And defensive items are also less contested in some of the low elo lobbies. So it's easy for you to get that Bremble Vest that you needed. So now you may have some questions, right? You'd be like, hey, crap, crap, Zozo. You know, I got my frontline items, but you know, this game is not giving me any fucking sword, uh, bow. I, I, I have no like 80 items on my gym. That's fine. You can play a different, you know, backline. You can play some AP carries such as, you know, Victor, Lux, Oriana. Or even a three-star MF, Seraphine, and Kaisa, you know? Oh, what if you get a bunch of frontline items and boom, you got more frontline items? Okay, you, your situation might be a little doomed. But what you can do for playing for top four, you can build Morello. Put it on some Morello holders like Malzahard. Or even put it on Scion and just play for top four. Cool. Now you know we're going to focus on, on uh, Scion itemization first. Let's talk about Jin itemizations next. I do believe there is no best in slots for Jin, uh, Jin's items in this game. It's very situational, but my personal favorite is Last Whisper, Giant Slayer, and the QSS. I would recommend you build your Jin items based on your lobby. You know, if your lobby is building Bramble Vest, Last Whisper is your way to go. But you can also use some other units like Vi, Jace, or even Augments like Weak Spot to counter Brumble Vest. If your lobbies are running Colossus, you know, Bruisers, or some rerolling three star units, sometimes you can take a look at their board. You can sort of like get that from the Augments they're choosing, such as, you know, if they take Bruiser Augments or Underdog or Featherweights, you get the sense, right? They're gonna build a super tanky unit. Giant Slayers are way to go. But I don't recommend building Giant Slayer early on unless players in the lobby build Warmog early because Giant Slayer's value goes up as the game, game progresses to the late game. If your lobbies are running Assassins, you can consider building a Guardian Angels to give your Jin extra chance to get up and shoot more shots. But Guardian Angel got nerfed in 12.1. That's okay. You know, Bramble Vest, if you have Bramble Vest and you've been... If you look at my guide later about the positioning against Assassins, you still have a good chance to beat Assassins. If your lobbies are running Colossus and with like some 5 cost carries, or they're, they're, they're other players just like you playing the same comp, Quicksilver is a good item for your gen because it prevents Jin from getting CC'd from Blizz, Scion, Galio, Rom, all these like annoying units. So your gen can keep shooting those sniper shots. And if your lobbies are running from like the AP carries with backline axes such as Victor, Lux, you should probably prioritize building Blood Surster and Dragon Claw so your Jin has a better shot to stay alive, shoot these bullets, and heal back to full health. The highest DPS build for Jin is Infinity Edge or Deathblade plus Last Whisper and Giant Slayers. But personally, I don't recommend building Infinity Edge on Jin. Because it gets countered by Bramble Vest so easily, and Bramble Vest is getting more popular these days because, you know, there are more players playing Assassins now. So, it's probably better to build a Deathblade. Lastly, I want to talk about some other viable options for your Jin. Obviously, these items are all going to work on Jin, such as Infinity Edge, Last Whisper, Giant Slayers, Deathblade, Blood Sister, Red Fire Cannon, Titans Resolve, Runan, Squid Suits, Quicksilver, Guardian Angel, and Dragon Claw. But the biggest lesson here. Build your Jin items based on your lobby. Cool. Now I'm going to talk about some of the good augments you would take for this comp. First thing first, I wanted to I wanted to I want to make this point super clear. For your first augment, you want to pick a very flexible choice. It's it's because you know it's always good to keep your options open early on before you committing to any comps. You don't walk into a game and just like, okay, in this game, I am playing snipers 100%. If the shop doesn't give you a single sniper, doesn't give you any of these units, you probably just like, oh crap, what do I do, right? So you want to keep your first uh, options flexible. 
So here are some of the good augments that I recommend uh, to pick for this comp. For tier one, uh, ascensions are really good because you're building our front lines. Binary airdrops give you more items. You can actually put two items on a unit and get that additional item. And this augment will get super strong late games because you might get, you know, like four additional items from binary airdrop. Obviously, bodyguard, sniper, clockwork, enforcer, um, item, or even protector plus one is good for this comp because they give you extra synergy. So you can have the flexibility of running something else. Uh, phony frontline, sniper desk, these are all good complementary augments for your board. Keep in mind that phony frontline, if you see in your lobby, there are two or more than two players are playing, you know, um, challengers, don't pick phony frontline. You're just giving them a chance to reset and kill an entire board. But if they don't, if there's no, if there's no challengers, phony frontline is actually so good against almost anybody, especially assassins. Stat United, this one's interesting. This one's really, really good because if you look at the synergy earlier, we have tons of synergies. So Stan United 1, 2, 3 are super, super good for this comp. Weak spot is good. Throw the Han gives you extra sustains. Pandora makes you get great best in slot tank items and also great gen items kind of situational as well. That's why it's good. Cybernetic, Celestial, and Exiles are all pretty fucking good. For tier 2 augments, uh, Tomb of Trades, Ancient Archive is really good because you might get snipers, bodyguard, whatever. Uh, extra synergy you want it. Armor plating, armor plating is good. Make sure that your Scion can, uh, you know, survive even longer. Protector, Sniper, Bodyguard, Clock War, plus one. We talked about this before. Clear Mind, this one's really good. If you get Clear Mind as your first Augment, take it. It's so fucking good. It's probably the most OP Augment in the game. Ixels, Metabolic uh, Accelerator, Rich Get Richer, Stand United, Thrill, Broken Stopwatch, Lestio. These are all really really good uh, augments for your board. Tier 3. Two Seed Gloves gives you a, a extra a, a extra itemizations, Bodyguard, Clockwork, Enforcer, Item, pro Protector, plus 2. Good synergies with your board. Golden Ticket. I put a question mark there. Golden Ticket is probably good as like a second or third augment if you have if you save off some gold and you're about to roll down and this augment will help you find these units. High in shopping, level, level up. These are gr good augments to help you to level up faster and find higher tier units. New recruit, obviously, plus one is always good. Stand United, Thrill, Windfall. These are all great augments. I want to talk about three dices, actually. High Roller. High Roller is actually insane with this board. Why? Because at level eight, if you use that, if you try to, at level eight, if you try to find a Jin three star, use that on Tristana. And use that on MF. Tristana gives you 26% of chance finding extra gin. MF gives you 25% of chance finding extra gin. These odds are insane for to help you to hit a gin three star. And gin three stars is probably the strongest three stars for a cost in the game right now. Cool. Let's talk about economy strategies. You probably already noticed this comp runs lots of four cost units. So the best scenario is to roll down your gold at level eight. Stage four, two and stage four, five are good intervals to go level eight and start rolling down your gold to 10 or even zero depends on your HP. With around 30 gold at level eight, you can get around 150 shops with 15% of chance hitting four cost units. Your expected value is about 23 four cost offerings. And your goal is to hit Jin or Oriana two stars, ideally Jin two stars because he's the primary carry of your comp, and also Scion Braum two stars. Whoever gets two stars first will carry on the tank itemizations. And you would only consider leveling to level nine if you hit your two stars front lines and your two stars back lines. You're healthy, you're winning fights, and you think you can actually go nigh and don't die. But in many, many games that I have played, you probably have to roll down at seven or even at level six to avoid bleeding out so fast. There are typical, there are typically there are a few scenarios uh, for your uh, economy. Win streak start is probably very rare in your games. Basically, what happens is that, you know, in the, in the early game, you get some one cost or two cost, two stars naturally from the shop. 
you you are win streaking in stage two and three, and you're pretty healthy in the early and mid game. So your leveling up intervals is typically at two one you go level four, two five level five, three two level six, three five level seven, and then you go to level eight at four two or four five and start rolling down to find your units. Sometimes you should consider roll. Uh, you should consider leveling to uh, level five at two two. Or even level to six at three one, you know when you are about to face like another win streaking player, and you wanted to actually keep your streak. This is a very very good and viable strategy because when you level up, you put more pressures on other players. You're a higher level, more of your units will likely to survive, and they will do more player damage to other players. And you also you will get a higher uh, level shop offerings for free. So that's great. And if you happen to beat the other win streak guy, you keep your win streak, the other guy loses his win streak, that's even better for you. Cool. Now let's talk about like a regular star. You know, this is probably the most common for you. And you wanted to play your strongest board with a mix of frontline units and also backline units. You wanted to make good items early on to save you HP. So you can actually get to level eight. That's why I recommend to start with chain. You know they're less contested. Defensive items are great early on, and also he counters assassins and infinity edge. So your typical leveling up interval is two one. You go to level four, two five. You go to level five, three two level six, three five level seven, and four two four five level eight, which is similar to a win streaking. I wanted to talk about a godlike opener, Yordles. Yordle, why? Because Yordle units are great item holders for this comp. You can put your Jin items on Tristana early on. Poppy will be the tank item holder for your Saya. They give you extra gold. And the two star Tristana with Jin items, it's actually pretty fucking strong in the early and mid games. So if you see Yordles in your shop early games, play Yordles. Don't reroll them. Let them give you extra gold so that you have more gold to roll later on. And this is probably one of my favorite uh, openers for this comp. Poppy, Blitzcrank, Ziggs, Tristana, and Kaylin. Now let's talk about another strategy which is super high risk, but potentially with super high reward as well. This is the Lose Streak Star. So in some games you realize, fuck, my early game units have no synergies. And I don't have a single two-star units, and all my, my entire lobby, everyone have two-star units, but not me. And my strongest board is weaker than anyone in this bot in, in the lobby. So I would advise you, one, either to look to play Yordles for the extra gold, or just don't play, just play nothing. Open your fort. You play zero units in stage two. Basically, you will lose the entire stage two for 50 gold at around 2-7 and 3-1. Most common or probably the worst case scenario for you is that you will start a game at 50 H 58 HP at 2-7 or 3-1. And what happened there is that at, at level 5, at 2-7 you wanted to level to level 5, make your good items and play strongest board so you actually don't lose to minions. Make sure you level up, right? 5 units It's significantly stronger than 34 units uh, to beat the minions. Don't ask me how I know it. I, I've seen the consequences. And you would level to 6 at 3-2. And from here, typically, there are uh, two scenarios. Scenario, scenario number one is probably the most common. Um, you, because you didn't play anything, your board is not strong at all. And you will continue your lose streak. But I would try to build a board so that I can actually kill one or two units to save HP. And you would level to 7 and 3-5 and roll down all your gold, aiming to stabilize your board. Scenario number two. This one is a little rare. It's that like somehow, somehow, you, you, you won a few fights in, uh, in stage three. That's great because you're probably already above 50 gold. You're not making extra gold, and you started winning, so you actually save your HP. This gives you extra time, right? So you can actually level to seven and three five, and you can either level to eight at four one or four two, and roll down all your gold 
try to stabilize your board. This is the general strategy of how you can play a loose streak star. Cool. Lastly, I wanted to give you guys some tips about how to play this uh, sniper board, especially some of the specific matchup tips that you guys probably are looking for. Some of the general tips include, you know, you wanted to keep your units positions dynamic, move your units positions uh, every round, so that your when your opponents scout your board, they don't really know which corner your gin is in. That basically says that, right? You you wanted to scout more. You also wanted to position your Blitz and Braum very smart because these two units put a lot of pressure on your opponents. Blizz grabs the back line carries, basically gives you a free win. And trust, this happens to me in challenger lobbies. And that will just win your win you the fight immediately. Braum is not as smart as Scion. You know, Scion casts his ability to the majority of the enemies, but Braum casts his ability based on the angle of his auto attacks, right? So you wanted to position wisely. Make a good angle of that Braum so your Braum will cast his all in the direction of the enemy's carries. And also, don't forget to put your extra item components on Janna or Blitz because they give you extra shield, extra full item. Your gloves can turn into like Banshee or Shroud. Belt can turn into Zeke's Banshee, Zizira. Cloak can even turn into a Zephyr or Chalice. These are great units for your board and great items. And sometimes you would you would be surprised by like what a Kaelin two uh, what a Kaelin two star can do. Okay, Kaelin two star is a great early game unit because it often guarantees a one for one trade, and it can also snipe Kaisa two or some other key units in the late game. And later on, you could add, also add in a Jace uh, to counter enemy three stars carries to give you that enforcer. And Jace can also give you extra armor shred that you're looking for. Lastly, my last tip is probably the most important one. Gym 1 is a really, really weak unit. Tristana 2 stars with Gym items is almost always feel better than a Gym 1. Especially if you're running 3 Yordos because they also give you extra gold, right? So when you do your transitioning, when you roll down 8... Make sure you transition to Gen 1 when you find other supporting units like Sion, Oriana, Janna, Braum, and you already sold your other Yordos, you, you, you think it's the time to give up on the extra economies from Yordos to make your board higher value, and also sell these Yordos to give you more gold to roll at level 8. So, Tristana 2 is actually stronger than Gen 1. Cool. You guys probably are waiting for this one. This is my tips to uh, how to beat assassins with snipers. Your win condition is that the core carry of assassins like a Shago 3 got stuck on your front lines. So, so that would give your Jin enough time to basically snipe everyone down. What you wanted to do versus assassins is that you wanted to right corner Jin. But be careful of Blizz Crank if the enemy's running a Blizz, and they also don't have QSS or Banshee. If that's the case, you probably want to put your Jin on the second spot to the right in the back lines. Backline your tank items holders, and for instance, in this case, it's Bra, or in this case, it's Saya, and put it on the spot where you think the enemy's assassin's primary carries will land, because. In this case, if Shaco lands like around this spot, Shaco will get stuck on the Scion. You almost guarantee you're going to win because Shaco is going to take forever to kill your uh, primary tank. And you also want to cluster units together, like this example, so that your Oriana can ult to your entire team, not only granting your shield to your entire team, but also CC the enemy assassins. So this is like a standard board uh, positioning for your for your comp. Keep in mind, like I put Braum, Scion, Blizz, these are your tanky units on the outer perimeter of your uh, cluster so they can take damage first. And Janna, Oriana sort of in the middle to cast their CC spells. Jin all the way in the corner to do damage and also enemies cannot touch my Jin. 
I will link a short example from one of my fights in Challenger lobbies of how I beat a fully capped uh, Syndicate Shaco 3 Assassin's board. Also link the shorts linked here. Cool. Now let's talk about some of the, some of the tips against some other popular comps in 12.1. This is the tips of how to beat Arcanist. Your win condition is Scion and Braum and Oriana, CC all the enemies and Jin snipes down everyone. If you don't have like like healing augments or like blustersters for your Jin, you probably don't want to put your Jin in the back corner versus carries like Lux because Lux could potentially just one shot your Jin. What is a good spot if you're playing against the Lux is probably the cert position to the left or cert position to the right. So that when Lux casts her first spell, it will probably reach Oriana or Janet first. And, and, also if, and also, if you put a Jin at the third spot, the Lux spell would not hit Jin at all. You also wanted to spread your units so that your Oriana is guaranteed to land the shockwave on the enemies, not on your own units. And the way Arcanist plays, Arcanist uh, players always tend to cluster their units. So Siam, Brahm, and Oriana has super high value to, to play against Arcanist because you land your CCs on almost everyone. Another viable strategy versus Arcanist in general is that if you see a few players in your lobby took Arcanist related augments or building blue buff, you, sh you, you should prioritize build a Dragon Claw and you could put that Dragon Claw on your corner units and put that corner units on the opposite side of Lux. So you're, every time Lux sh shoot her lasers, it will always you know, hit a Dragon Claw carriers and won't kill it. What if you're playing against a two stars victor? Hmm. Well, if you don't have good sustained items, if you don't have Dragon Claw, just pray to Mordok that, that the victor misses all his lasers. It happens. Cool. Lastly, let's talk about the tips versus some other players that are also playing Scions, Galios, Frontlines. And this happens sometimes like, you know, you build a full damage gen and the lobby's running Scions and Galios. What do you do, right? Because, uh, you know, Scion and Galios combined can probably CC your gen for six seconds. So here's a simple positioning trick that you can do to counter Scions and Galios. The idea is that you wanted to put most of your units on one side, so you're baiting Galio and Scion to alt that side. So in this example, I put Scion in the middle because Scion is smart enough to decide which corner to alt. Jin and MF in the corner. In this case, I have a full itemized Jin with all damage items. So I wanted to put a unit that I care less on the left side of Jin, so that if their enemy is playing Blitzcrank, cool, take my misfortune. Don't take my Jin. I put Brom and Blitzcrank at the same side, along with Oriana and Janna. So when the enemy is running Scion or Galio, imagine he Scions right here. He Scions automatically going to alt this side, and your primary carry Jin will be safe to shoot his spells. Also, Galio has a higher chance to land here as well. So that you get the idea. So the core idea is to avoid getting CC'd uh, for your Jin because. The time is super valuable for snipers. It casts kind of slow. Cool. You guys made it. This is the end of my guide. And let me know what you think in the comment section. This is my first guide. So I'm looking for feedback on, you know, what guide do you want to see next? Do you like this style of guide of a lecture style from me with PowerPoint slides instead of a instead of a visuals of in-game footages? And if you're better players or you have any other great tips, what is what are some other tips you have for uh, playing snipers? I'd love to know. I'd love to make this comp even better. Lastly, thank you so much for watching all the way till here. Um, please consider subscribe to my YouTube channels. Follow me on my Twitch and TikTok, and you can ask me any questions, especially live questions at uh, during my stream at Twitch.tv/sozotft. Good luck, everyone. Happy climbing, and I will see you on my stream.